All right there, Josh. Level with me here. What's with this box of rocks? This actually isn't a box of rocks at all. All these little things that you call rocks are actually fossils from many different animals. We got Triceratops, we got T-Rex, we got little mammals, we got fish scales, we got crocodile fossils. All in this little box. They look like little rocks, but they're not. They're from animals that once lived 66 million years ago. Wow. But, 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 but wait, answer me this, Josh. How did all these little critters come to be living in the same place? Well, these animals probably didn't live in the exact same place. They were washed together. So if you look at the little little sediments here, this is all really fine sands. So this was part of, part of a river or a stream system. So as the river's flowing, as the river takes a bend and a curve, on the inside of that bend, the energy in the river decreases. When that river decreases, all the little fine particles, whether they're fossils or rocks, fall to the ground and accumulate in these little areas. So these probably lived upstream, some way, it could have been close, could have been far, but they were washed down river and buried in one place together. So all these little fossils give us a snapshot of the ecosystem living underneath the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are cool, but there were lots of other animals underneath their feet. And this gives us a good representation of what that ecosystem looked like. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Hey, you know, I went whitewater rafting once. Didn't turn out too good for me. Probably never do it again. Uh, well, but that's really awesome, man. At least you didn't turn into a fossil, right? Yeah, right. Thank goodness. Oh, my gosh. More stabby things. Please tell me all about them. Well, these stabby things here are called air scribes. Air scribes are essentially mini jackhammers. So when we turn them on... Whoa! What is that? That's crazy <laughs> noise, man. These are what we use to get the fossils out of the rock. So if you notice here, this is a big chunk of rock. Over here, this is bone. Whoa! So this rock, this rock here is really hard. You could use dental tools, you could use hand tools. The problem is it's going to take you a long time to do it. Yeah! So when I we bet. use the stabby things, or the air scribes, we can, I like stabby things. <laughs> we, can, we can work through the rock much quicker. And as we get closer to the bone, if, if there's a good separation between the dirt, the sediment, and the bone, as we get closer with the tools, the vibrations will pop those rocks right off the surface and you have a nice smooth surface to the bone. So we do this, we carefully use the tools to remove any rock from the bones to basically get them out of their rock Tunes. So when you're preparing these things, you got to be extra careful not to hit any of that real bone there. Get that rock off That's nice and clean, huh? Absolutely correct, because these yeah. things can do a lot of damage. And you'll notice here... We have wait, wait, they can? Lots of damage. Yeah, i got some ideas here, you buddy. Like damage. <laughs> but if you notice, we have various different sizes. So this is pretty good size. We have a little bit smaller one. Oh, wow. And they have a really teeny tiny one here. Very this is soft. very teeny tiny. This is for very soft and very delicate rock and with bones. So there's certain certain fossils like fish fossils that oh. are very delicate. Wow. So we'll use these for for uh, cases like that. Wow. But if you have really hard rock that it's really, you know really difficult you, to get the rocks out of, you need something more aggressive. You gotta bust a big boy out. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. So these all these tools here are used to to remove bones from their rocks. Now as we get closer to the bone, you can switch over to hand tools and not use the stabby things. Um, but these work well at getting m much of the bulk removal, the big, the big chunks like, of rock. I would imagine if you used the hand tools, it would take a very long time. It would take a very long time, yeah. especially if the rock is really, really hard. Well, that's good. You so, got some tools to handle the business then. That's right. We need yeah. lots of tools in this business. Awesome. Well, thank you for showing me those. That's You're awesome. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. So once you get all the rock off of the fossils, they're not quite ready to go out on the exhibits yet, right? Typically, no. It depends on where you're, where you're getting the fossils from, the hardness of the rock, um, and the condition of the bone, whether they're really mineralized or they're relatively soft. Um, in this case, this is a, a femur, so a leg bone to a sauropod dinosaur, one of the long neck dinosaurs, from a different locality. Not where Triceratops is from, but this is much older. This is from the Jurassic uh, period. And this bone is much more heavily mineralized than any of the things where the Triceratops come from. And often you see them busted up in, in, in pretty rough condition. So in this case, it's a big, somewhat of a puzzle. The bones are broken, you gotta get the fits tight to make them, you know, get together to the point where you can get a good exhibit piece. And that's what we're doing here. This bone is in pretty rough shape, so my fossil preparator has been taking the, the puzzle pieces out piece by piece, 
clean them off individually, and he'll assemble them later um, into, into the uh, exhibit quality piece. And that's, that's what's going on here. All right, great. Well, thank you for showing all the steps of this process from finding things out in the field to digging them out, yeah, getting thanks, them Josh. to the museum, cleaning them up so they can go on the exhibits for us to see. You're welcome. Paleontologists, you gotta be kidding me.